So now I've got another question. This one is from Mlengeni Bushle Lushaba. And Bushle has given us a diagram. And from the diagram, we need to answer questions. Now, let's go back to what I said last week. If they've given you a diagram, all your answers must come from the diagram. They shouldn't ask you something and then you take it out from outer space somewhere. No. The examiners want to see whether you can read a diagram. Remember what I said about scientists? Very lazy individuals. They either want to represent everything in a sketch or in a diagram because we don't like writing paragraphs. So let's look at this diagram and see what it says. So just by mere looking at this diagram, I actually started drawing it. Um, this one is represented as C, this one is A, and this one is B. So the first question for this diagram tells us to define dynamic equilibrium. But remember, we've done that last week where is the forward reaction is equal to the reverse reaction, and that is the definition for dynamic equilibrium. So um, Bushle, that question we did last week, but now something very interesting now says we must use the information. I'm also just going to name this A. Use the information in the graph to give down the values. We must find what is the value of x, what is the value of y, and what is the value of z. And what they're talking about, they're talking about these numbers here. Now, based on what we know from chemistry, we know that the numbers here in front are represent the amount that is required. Remember, the, amount, the number in front tells us how many moles of that is required. Now, we just have x, we have a, b, and c, and then z, x, and y's, and all that stuff. But what, I, what did Tobila tell you? You must look at the graph at what you're given. So let's look at the graph so that we can take it from there. If we look at C, let me use a different color. If we look at C, we can see that C, this is actually moles, and this is time. See, I'm taking shortcuts here. So C, C starts off at zero, and then it goes all the way up because it's making something, right? And then let's look at A. A starts off at 16, but then it goes down, 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 because it's getting less and less and less and less. The same thing with B. It starts at 8, and then it goes down, 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 down. So if we're looking at B, we can see that these three lines, or these three graphs, are actually at equilibrium at this time. When at equilibrium, C is 12. At equilibrium, my drawing is not really drawn to scale, but it's 8. And looking at uh, Boucher's graph, B at equilibrium will then be 4. So now, how are we going to find the values that represent A, B, and C? So this is what I did, or what, what I would rather do. I would say A, let me just take these ones off, then we'll give them values again. I would say A, I've got B, I've got C. At equilibrium, my A, what did we say it is? It's 8. At equilibrium, B is 4. And at equilibrium, C is 12. No, from what we learned when we were doing ratios in grade 9, when they say you've, so, you've got so much money, somebody takes one-fifth, somebody takes two-thirds, how do you find the money or whatever when we're doing ratios in grade 9? Kind of think about that. It's the same thing we're going to do. We're going to take the lowest common multiple between the three numbers, and then we were able to find the ratios of A, B, and C, which is actually pretty simple because looking at this question, it's only for one mark. So I can already see that 4 is the lowest number that I have here. So I'm going to say 8 divided by 4, 4 divided by, sorry, this is 4, 8 divided by 4, 4 divided by 4, and 12 divided by 4. So this is that I'm easy mathematics. So here I'm going to, 4 goes into 8 twice, 4 goes into 4 once, and 12, 4 goes into 12 three times. So already from this equation, I can take away the x's and then I can write down the mole ratios that they are actually using. Because now that we found that, A is 2, B is 1, or you don't have to write the 1, and then your C will then be 3. So that is number 1 in Bushley's question. We've already established or found the values for X, Y, and Z. So the second one, Bushley wants us to calculate, let me just name this B, she wants us to calculate the KC, the KC in a closed container, remember we talked about closed and open system, in a closed container um, at three 
cubic decimeters. Now remember, if your volume was not correct, you would have had to convert it from whatever other unit that we were using. In physical sciences, we only use the same units. We don't deviate from something else. You can't ask me now, Tops, what's the time? I'm like, um, it's 23 hours and 15 minutes. We don't speak like that. We, use, we are very consistent with everything that we do. So always remember to do the same thing in physics. So now we need to calculate the KC. Of this, of, 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 of this graph. Now I'm gonna show you two methods that I think we can do it in. The first one would be to use ratios, and then the second method would to be used, the, my, I would like to use my start method, the start used in equilibrium. So I'm just gonna write this method one, method number one. So this one, if you understand your ratios, then it's gonna be a bit easier for you. So remember, we are looking for the KC at this volume. So I know I've got A, I have B, and I have C. But remember, A, B, and C, we don't know whether it's carbon, whether it's hydrogen, or whatever. So what does that mean if you don't know anything? You go and look everything on your graph. And when we are calculating KC, we take everything at equilibrium. So I'm only going to be working with between these two, right? This is my equilibrium, so I'm only going to read uh, answers right there. So looking at A, looking at the graph, I know that at equilibrium, I'm at eight, and the volume is three. Now, if you don't know where I'm getting that, I'm just gonna write here. Remember, at equilibrium, we have C is equal to N over V, where you have your moles all over your volumes. Now, the eight is my moles, which I'm getting here for A, and my volume, based on Buse's question, my volume, they've told us that the volume is three. Let me just get, go back to my color. So for B, what is my, moles at equilibrium at B, it is four. What in what is the volume of the container? It is three. At C, what is my moles at equilibrium? It is 12. That's where I get my 12. And in what is the volume of the container that it's in? It is three. So now let's calculate that. Calculators back. So I'm gonna say eight over three. Uh, eight over three, remember to say SD. So I'm gonna take it to two decimal places. So I'm gonna say I've got 2.67. So I've got 2.67, 2.67. And remember, at equilibrium, it is mole per cubic decimeter. Let's do the next one. Uh, there we are. So now I have four over three equals, remember to say SD, I'm also going to leave it in two decimal places, so I've got 1.33, so I'm going to get 1.33. Remember, if it was a 5, then we would have changed the 3 to a 4, because then we are rounding off. And when, when did we start rounding off? We started rounding off in grade 4. So now we are implementing everything we've learned from grade 1 all the way to grade 4 to grade 12. So this one's going to be easy, 3 goes into 12 four times, so that will be four moles per cubic decimeter. Always remember your SI unit. Now let's calculate KC. Let me just keep my answer. Calculating KC, I'm always going to write it. I'm going to say your products all over your reactants. Now remember, if my products or my any of my reactants were solids or um, liquids, then we don't include it. Now remember, your reactants are on your left-hand side and your products are on your right-hand side. Do not confuse the two. So in this case, my product, which is a C, looking at this equation, I've got a C, but now we've got a number in the front. If you've got a number in the front in any chemical equation, it becomes an exponent. And then I've got A, there's a number in the front, it becomes an exponent to the two. And then I've got B, there is a one, but anything to the exponent one remains itself. Now I'm gonna take the values that I have here. The value for C at equilibrium, I have four to the exponent three all over. At A, I've got 2.67 to the exponent two. At B, I've got 1.33 to the exponent one, which you don't really have to write. And let's see what we get. So I would do it like this, do that. I put this in a bracket. I've got four to the exponent three. Then I've got 2.67 to the exponent two. I've got 1.33. 
Now I get a final answer of 6.75. You can see those are zero, so nothing gets changed over. I just close my calculator again. Now I get six point. I get six point seven five. And remember, KC does not have a value or doesn't have an SI unit rather. But this is the first method using ratios that I would have used based on what I was given on the graph. Now I'm gonna show you guys another method which I think you can actually use. So I'm just gonna rewrite the whole equation again. Remember we had an A, they plus that with a B, it was an equilibrium to a C. And then they told us, or we actually worked out that A was two mole, this was one mole, and this was three moles. Now, this is one method you could use. I like using the start. What did you use at the start? What did you use up? And what do you have at equilibrium? So going back to this graph here, hopefully I can remember all these values. What did we start with at A? We started at 16 moles. B, we started off at eight moles. C was zero moles. I'm gonna plug it in exactly as it is. So at A, Initially, we had 16 moles. B, we had eight moles. And remember, these are my reactants. I'm still baking a cake, which is C. So I don't have a cake yet, I'm still baking. So C will be zero moles. Initially, I didn't have any cakes, I only had ingredients. And what was then used up? So now I'm going to look at this and say, okay, when it reached to equilibrium, at A, I had 16, equilibrium, I had eight. Now you can start subtracting to say, what did you initially have and what, do you, what are you left with? At B, we started off with eight. At equilibrium, we had four. At C, we started off with, with zero. At equilibrium, we had 12. So we gained 12 at equilibrium. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna write what we had at equilibrium. For A, at equilibrium, we've established that we had eight moles at equilibrium. At B, at equilibrium, we've established we had four moles. And at C, we move from a zero to 12 moles, right? Now, this is what then you can do. 16 minus something will give me eight, or you can say 16 minus eight. So I started with 16, I used eight moles, and that's why at equilibrium, I'm left with eight moles. Now you can say eight minus something will give me four or you can say eight minus four. So I started off with eight moles, I used four moles, and that is why at equilibrium, I had four moles. At C, initially I had nothing. I don't know what I've gained, but I know at equilibrium I've gained 12. So it means I must have gained 12 cupcakes somewhere, and that is why at equilibrium, I now have 12. So this is my first step. But now I must calculate my equilibrium concentration. And that's where we use the formula C is equal to N over V. So I'm gonna do it all, the same for all of them, N over V. How many moles do I have? I've got eight. They are in a container, which is three cubic decimeters. I'm gonna say C is equal to N over V. I've got four moles. They're in a container that is three cubic uh, decimeters. I've got C is equal to N over four over V. I've got 12 moles, they are in a container of three cubic decimeters. Okay, this one I still remember, this one was very easy, which is mole cubic decimeters. Okay, so, so let me just look at the answers that we've got here. So in this case, we've got 2.67. It looks exactly the same, it's also eight over three, and they've got 1.33. And you're gonna get the same thing on this side. Here I've got 2.67. Remember your mole per cubic decimeter. In this case, I've got four over three, and if I remember correctly, we've got 1.33 moles per cubic decimeter. But we are not done, my darlings. We are calculating KC. The whole reason for all this shabam is that before we can calculate KC, because KC only uses values at concentration, we have to first find the concentration, then we can calculate KC. So this is only the tip of the iceberg, but the rest is actually pretty simple. So now, value, uh, formula for KC, I've got KC. Remember, your KC is your products, and they are always all over your reactants. Products are on your right, reactants are on your left. Now, my products, I've got a C to the exponent three. Reactants, I've got an A to the exponent three. 
I've got a B to the exponent 1, which you don't have to write. Now, you take the value at equilibrium. That's what the brackets are telling us, that concentration was involved. We looked for the concentration. We calculated our concentration. We have concentration. So for C, I'm going to have 4 to the exponent 3. For A, this is my value for A, I'm going to have 2.67 to the exponent 2. I made it my mistake there. This is not a 3. This is a 2. And then I've got a B, which is 1.33 to the exponent 1, but you don't have to write it. Let's just get the correct answer that we've got here that we've calculated. If you put all of this in your calculator, we're going to get 6.75. And here I'm going to say 6.75 for my value of Kc. And as you can see, it's exactly the same methods, but we used the ratios on the other one. And on the other one, I used um, the table. So I just want to go through this with you guys quickly so that you can see it's exactly the same thing. For this, we used ratios of at the, the, the molecules or the substances at equilibrium and the container in which we were in. Then we got our answer. This value of Kc remains the same. In this one, Coming back to this side, we use the formula for concentration, which is moles over the volume, which is exactly the same. I also got 8 over 3 on the other side. The trick with, the, with when you want to use the table, the only trick is to think about what you are doing. For an example, guys, if I start off with 16 and at the end I have 8, it means I must have lost. Because when you are baking a cake, you are using things to produce other things. You can't be baking cupcakes, but the flour doesn't end. The eggs just keep popping, pop, 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 everywhere. No, they are getting used up so that you can do something else. So this side, we are subtracting. Your reactants are being used up. So that's why we had to subtract. And that's why equilibrium, we have less than what we had started with. On the other side, where we have products, when you start baking a cake, you don't have any cupcakes. You have flour and eggs and milk and this and that. But then when you start baking and stuff, that's where your cupcake starts coming alive. So initially you start with zero cupcakes and then you gain some stuff along the way. So here we've gained 12 and that's why at equilibrium, all of a sudden we have 12. And that's where we use the formula C is equal to N over V and then we can calculate the concentration of that molecule. And then again, for, concent for, for my KC, products over reactants, but always remember, when we're talking about KC, we only use our gases and aqueous solutions. Solids and liquids and liquids are not in there because they are very inconsistent. And this is the question we've got from Obuche. And Obuche, thank you so much for this question. That was the last bit of the question. This whole section actually counted for seven marks. So you can imagine where they're going to tick off. And guys, remember, when you are doing a table like this, work on the side. Let the examiner go see your answers and mark there. Don't work on a piece of paper and then just plug in. We want to see where you got what you got.